I was uh, I was thinking today, man, as uh, I was getting ready to come to church, that uh, you know uh, I uh, think about you know resolutions, and a lot of people will be making resolutions, New Year resolutions this year. But I was thinking uh, 43 years ago, I made a resolution or vow unto God I'd serve Him the rest of my life. You're going on 44 years when that breaks midnight tonight. And, uh, you know, I, I'm so glad I made that resolution. I'm so glad that I yeah. made that vow. And, uh, you know, I look back and uh, it don't seem like 44 years, but then again, yeah. when I look at my hair, <laughs> and I look, at, I look at my face and I look at the my life, amen, then I know that it's been that many years, but you know what? I thank God. Amen. I thank God that I am uh, here tonight. I thank God. I'm like Teresa. What better place is there to be in the, be in the house of God on the last day of the year? Isn't that right? Amen. And I just thank God and praise God that I'm here. And amen, I was thinking about, amen, uh, as Teresa said, you know, back 40-some years ago, 44 years ago, uh, I'd be out tonight. And I wouldn't be making Mary in the church. I'd be out making Mary in some beer garden or something. Or at home, amen. But, you know, I'm, I'm so glad that, you know, that through those 44 years coming up, that, amen, I've been married. Yeah. Amen. And I've been happy. And uh, I don't have to go out and buy me a bunch of bottles to get happy either. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I just thank and praise yeah. God for that. And I thank God. Amen every day for what He's done for us through our lives. Amen. And from year to year. Amen. Just think about it. God's kept you from year to year. God has preserved you from year to year. And if that's not enough to thank God for, then I don't know what it is. Amen. But God will preserve you. God will take care of you. Amen. And we don't understand why a lot of people go out of this life Young, middle aged, or when they go out. But you know what? God has all the answers. And I like that song that Katie just sang there a little bit ago. God sees what we don't. Amen. God sees what we don't. Now, tonight, this is the last day of the year. Well, we don't know what 2018 holds, we don't know what we may face. But as I said this morning on the radio, let's just march on. <coughs> Amen? March on. Why, you can march on. Because there's going to be a day that we might not be able to march on. Amen? And I uh, just want to say tonight, amen, that I thank God that I'm here. I thank God that you're here. I thank God tonight as maybe as cold as it is, maybe as bitter as it is, there's no better place to be than in the house of God tonight. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You know, if I'd be sitting at home and I was still out in sin, and like I said, if I wasn't out in a bar, I'd be home drinking and watching TV. <laughs> Amen. I'd be doing something worldly. Amen. But I thank God that He took all those worldly things out of me. Praise God. You know what? You know, from that life 44 years ago up to tonight, <coughs> I didn't lose a thing in the world. I really didn't lose a thing. People think it's because they come to church or they start serving God, they're going to lose out. No, you don't lose. You gain. You gain. And I thank God that I've gained down to them years. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I'm going to go into a little bit more detail of what I've been ministering on the radio uh, this uh, Sunday I started preaching it. And uh, it's... Amen. Cheer for a new year. <laughs> Cheer for a new year. And like I said, I don't have to get a, a bottle of alcohol to get cheer. And I don't need it to get happy because God has already made me happy. And He's already made me cheerful. And amen. Cheer for a new year. Uh, and I like to go into Deuteronomy chapter 11. Chapter 11 of Deuteronomy. I don't want to read out the 10th verse, 11 and 12. Cheer for a new year. Amen. 
chapter 11, Deuteronomy, starting out with verse 10. And Moses told the people, For the land whither thou goest in to possess it, it is not as the land of Egypt, from which you came out, where thou sowest thy seed, and waterest it for thy foot, as a garden of herbs. But the land whither ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. And a land which the Lord thy God cared for, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it, I want you to catch this, from the beginning of the year, even unto the end of the year. Trisha, would you pray? Precious Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord, for another privilege and opportunity, thank you, Lord, you give Lord, to be your house, oh God. And Lord, be able, Lord, to take this last day of the year, Lord, to come and worship you, Lord, and give you glory and honor that's due into your name, to be able to hear your word, Lord, that may be put up within our hearts, Lord, the faith and the hope that we need, Lord, for the new year. And God, we just pray that your anointing would be upon the word, and God, you give us ears to hear what your spirit would st say unto us. In Jesus' name we ask it all. Amen. 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 Cheer for a good year. Amen. I don't know about you, but when uh, the children of Israel were out uh, and down in Egypt, which is a type of the world, uh, I can remember, amen, when I was out in the world, uh, I didn't have too much cheer. Uh, I wasn't too happy, amen. I wasn't happy with my life. I wasn't happy uh, where I was going, amen. But you know, when God came under the children of Israel, uh, though they were in bondage, uh, God gave them hope, amen. And I'm here to tell you tonight, as we go out of this old year into the new year, God can give you hope. Amen? And I don't know about you, I'm looking for a better year. I'm looking for a hopeful year. I'm looking for God to do something greater this year. Amen? And if we don't look at God doing something greater, then I think we miss it. Yes. Amen? Yes. And I believe that God can do uh, things greater for you and I. But the ones that amen He's going to do the greater for is the ones that are faithful. Amen? Yes. amen? Yes. Now, we've got a world today, we've got a, even a church world today, uh, that amen, if we went around a lot of churches tonight, uh, on New Year's Eve, uh, we'd find them closed. Yes. Right? Yes. And amen, God wants you and I uh, to be faithful, amen. And he even told the children of Israel, uh, he said, where you're at now, uh, he said, you've got to do all this where you're in Egypt. You've got to get out there and do it by what? Hard labor. Amen. amen. They had to get out there. They had to irrigate. They had to do things to get water from the Nile uh, to take care of their vegetation, uh, take care of the crops they had to grow. Uh, but God says, and Moses told them, uh, He said, I'm going to take you to a place uh, where you can possess, uh, but you don't have to worry about taking care of it. Because why? God's eye is always upon it. And I thought tonight, uh, amen, as I begin this year uh, and to the beginning of this year uh, until the end of the year, uh, I want God's eye on me. Amen. Yes. Don't you? And dear ones, we got to realize uh, that amen, as we go forth, uh, God has called you and I uh, in these last days uh, to go and possess. Mm -hmm. Amen. But a lot of people's not doing that today. I'm not talking about riches. I'm not talking about worldly fame. I'm not talking about possessing those things in the world. But I'm talking about possessing souls for the kingdom of God. Amen. 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 And that's why God, amen, promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. And he said here, he says, but the land where you go to possess it, it says it's got hills and valleys that, that amen, that, amen, that God sends rain upon it and you don't have to wear it. I don't know about you, we need a latter day rain. Amen. We need a refreshing. Amen. Yes. And I believe today, uh, steady people staying at home from the church, uh, I believe that we need to get in our uh, closets uh, and we need to pray unto God. Uh, God, 
Keep your eye on us from year to year and reign on us, Lord, that we can go possess the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. Well, we find out here that this is so plain and pointed that we may not even imagine a single day or an hour or a minute or anything that God's eye is not upon us. Amen? God is with us all the time. Amen. I've heard that scripture quoted so many times tonight as people have been testifying, God will never forsake me. God will never leave me. Amen. Why? Because He got His eye on us every minute, every second, every hour of the day. Amen? Amen. Even when I was thinking, amen, as I was looking at this word, and I look at this message, <laughs> No matter where the children of Israel were, whether they were in Egypt, whether they were in the wilderness, doesn't matter when they entered into the promised land, God's eye was upon them. Yes. Amen? And as I said earlier in the testimony, doesn't matter whether I was here at home, doesn't matter whether I was in the hospital, doesn't matter whether I was in Latrobe, Pennsylvania, God's eye was up on me and Francis. Amen. And no matter what the devil comes around and tries to tell you uh, that God don't care and God don't look on you and God's not going to worry about you, I'm here to tell you God cares. Amen. Amen. He said, cast all your care upon Him because He careth for you. And I began to look at this and I said, the Lord's eye is always upon it from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. Now that's God's promise. Amen. You can't get away from it. God said it. God, when He says something, God will perform it. Amen. Amen. And so we cannot grow worldly because if we grow worldly, this is what happens to people that want to stay out and grow in the world from the church. They get careless. <coughs> don't they? Yes. They get careless. They get so deep in damnation of amen and they think they're out in the world. They think they're all right with God. But dear ones, we're living in a time today uh, I don't want to be trying to live on two sides of the fence. <coughs> And that's what a lot of people is doing today. They're living, trying to live on one side and jump across the barbed wire fence to the other side. And they may even, a lot of them think there's green pasture on the other side. I tell you what, there's not going to be any greener pasture as long as you stay with God. He said He'd lead you what? he leads you to the still waters and you can lie down in the green pasture. That's right. Amen? Amen. Why would I want to go anywhere else? Right. Why would I want to look for something else? But God is so caring that He who is watching me is my shepherd. Amen. Now the Bible says that Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And if He is the good shepherd, uh, He's not going to let anything destroy you. Amen? A good shepherd takes care of his flock. Amen? Amen? And i tell you what, I can't, I've never found and never run across any better shepherd than the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Amen? Yeah. And he who cares for me is my Father. And he is my Father by the way of relationship. A lot of people go to church today, but they have no relationship. That's right. I thank God I got a relationship. Amen. It'd be almost like well, saying I'm married, but you don't have anything to do with your wife. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Isn't that right? Yeah. Some guys say, well, I've been married for 45. I've been married for 60 years. I've been married for 70 years. But what did your wife to do? Oh, well, I don't know what she done today. In other words, there's no personal relationship 
today, even in the family, uh, that's why they're having so many problems. Hello? And you ones, if we don't have a relationship with God, we're going to have problems. Amen. Amen. Yes. But you know what? Because I have a relationship with Him, He is my problem solver. I found out a long time ago uh, when I got saved uh, and I was raising my children, uh, amen, uh, amen, before I got saved, uh, I always thought I could fix it. You know? I thought I was the fix-it God. But I found out after that I got saved uh, that, amen, uh, I can't fix it. And what I done, when I got saved, and when I started praying, and I started going to church, I always went to God and I said, God, you don't fix this. I know I can't. And I let God fix it. When it comes to raising my children up, I let God fix it. And yet today, when problems arise, I let God fix it. Because He knows how to handle it. He knows how to do it. He knows where to pe get people at, where he can do something with them. I can't do it. So I just give it to God. Yes, amen. When I was up there in Latrobe, and I told you this before, I, I got to the place, even when I was up there with Francis, and I'd go back to my motel, and I'd keep telling the Lord, Lord, I can't fix this. There's nothing I can do, Lord, except pray. There's nothing more I can do except run back and forth to the hospital. The only thing I can do is trust in Thee, God. And I said, You created all this universe. You created everything that I see. You've even created me. And Lord, if You've created me, Amen. What Francie's going through, I said, That's just a small thing to You. Oh, yeah. And I said, Lord, if You can't fix it, then nobody can. Nobody can. Amen? But I find out here, suppose that in this year of 2018, we were at any rate filled with the desire to have our eyes always upon God from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Let's turn this around. Now God says, my eyes are always upon the land, He told the children of Israel, but their eyes wasn't all the time upon God. And I thought, well, the Holy Ghost told me, He said, why don't you just turn this thing around? And say, Lord, I've got my eyes on you from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. The problem is we get our eyes on too many other things. We worry about too many other things. And I thought, and the Holy Ghost spoke to me today, uh, that hey, if you get your eyes upon me from the beginning of the year until the end of the year, uh, then everything that you need and everything that you're able to want or maybe desire, I can give it to you. Yes. But the problem is, we need God out of it. How many in here wants things? Amen. How many in here desires things? The children of Israel did. They wanted a better place. They wanted a better home. Isn't that right? And, and they wanted it so bad that if you read the Scriptures, God says, when I'm taking this land, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't even build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you didn't even plant. I'm going to give you streams of water and things that you didn't even have anything to do with it. Because why? They finally got their eyes on God. Amen. Amen. Also, always wanting to win souls from the beginning of the end year to the end of the year. That should be you and I's utmost desire. It's to win a soul from the beginning of the year until the end of the year. I don't know about you, I believe God wants His people to get busy. Yeah. Amen. And I tell you what, I'm 70 years old. But I still want to win a soul for the glory of God. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Now a lot of people want to give up 
A lot of people want to quit. It's not time to quit. It's not time to give up. It's time that we get up, get up, not give up, and get moving again. Right. Amen? And I don't know about you, but if we look around in the churches today, the majority of them is empty. That's right. Isn't that right? Yeah. I don't know about you. I'd love to see this church get packed out. I'd love to see every church get packed out. I've been praying here lately for the pastors and for the churches that, Lord, you would give them souls. Hey, that's what we're in it for. Right. The Bible says, amen, if you don't want to go out into the harvest, pray unto the Lord of harvest that he would send others. Isn't that right? So we got a job to do. We really do. There's times I can't go. There's times maybe you can't go. But what's keep us from praying, hey Lord, bless somebody else. Send somebody else. Because why? We're all going to reap the blessings. If we pray for that pastor, if we pray for that church, and if they win souls, why? God hears our prayer. I'm not praying for any old church. And I'm not praying for any old pastor. When I pray, I said, Lord, send them where a pastor is preaching the word. Right, right, right. Where people are concerned about souls. Amen? Amen? Yeah. Can't just send them anywhere. I tell you what, I, I've been even thinking, God, I'm glad you sent me to a church where there's really, I got saved and it was salvation. I was so glad when God saved me that He saved me in a little church that wanted to worship God. Amen. Amen? amen. Though it was only 20 or 25, amen, in that church when I went there, I got saved, but they worshiped God. Amen? amen? They praised God. Today, a lot of people going to church don't know what they're going to do from one year to the next. They're just as bad as the world. They really don't. Amen. But amen, I thank God that amen from the time that I got saved, I haven't lost the desire to go to church on New Year's Eve. Amen. Amen. Churches have lost that. Oh, we're going to have church New Year's Eve. Uh, they don't want to hear it. You'd be surprised if Christians are sitting at home tonight watching for the great big ball to fall in New York City. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Wow. But wonder, listen, wonder if the Lord would come that night. Right. He said, I'm going to come as a thief in the night. I'm going to come when you least expect me to come. He said to be ready. Watch and pray and be ready. How can we be ready and prepared for the Lord if we're home watching for a ball to fall down a pole in New York City? Think about it. Just imagine that you and I have to live all the year without the eyes of God upon us. I couldn't even imagine that. I couldn't even visualize that. We have come to the opening of a new year. We have to get through it somehow, people will say. How are we going to get through it? You're not without the Lord. That's right. You're not. Amen. You're going to, what, struggle? You're going to go through a lot of pain. A lot of woe. But we always go through these things. But I wrote something down. People that don't go to church on New Year's Eve, this is usually what happens to them. They stumble through January, cold through the rest of the winter, groaning when spring comes, sweating through the summer, fainting through the fall, 
and waiting on another Christmas. <laughs> That's what the Lord gave me today. Let me read that again. They stumble through January. They're cold through the rest of the winter. They groan when spring comes. They sweat through the summer. They faint through autumn and just waiting on another Christmas. I didn't put New Year's in there because a lot of them don't go New Year's. Right. Amen? How grateful we ought to be to God for all His mercies. I don't know about you, i got so much to thank and praise God for this year. That's right. Amen? Amen. I told Francie here the other day, I said, you know what? I said, for half a year, for half a year, you were sick. For half a year, we didn't hardly get to do anything. For half a year, I watched her struggle. Hey, you wasn't there with me all the time. People really don't realize what you may go through. But thank God He was always there. You didn't see her struggling. You didn't see me struggling. But amen, thank God we made it. Amen. Thank God we're here tonight. And I'll tell you what, as God kept telling me, He says, I don't put no more upon you than you can bear. Amen. 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 If the eyes of the Lord will be upon us His people from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, let us be happy as we can during this year. Yeah. Amen. How many's happy? Amen. How many's going to stay happy? Amen. You're about to enter in a new year. Yeah. You ought to be glad if God gets you through midnight and you get into a new year, you can say, well, God gave me another year. Amen. Still telling you today. I said, you know what? I said, it don't even seem like Christmas was here and Christmas went. I said, it don't even seem like a new year is going to be gone and new year's coming in. Time goes so fast. And I found out after I hit 50, and a little bit after 50, boy, years started flying by. I go home from church on Sunday and, and then I go through the week and here it's Sunday again. I said, Lord, time to go back to church. And I look back from Sunday to Sunday and I thought, Lord, where'd all that time go? Amen. Now I don't even work at a job. Amen. It's moving so fast. You and I have our trials and troubles to come. Do not expect that you will be free from them. Like I said, I don't know what 2018 is going to hold for none of us. We don't even know what may hold us tomorrow. No. Right? Yes. But you know what? I know who holds tomorrow. You and I will have trials and troubles to come because why? I'm going to give you a reason why. The devil, he's not dead. He's not dead. He wants to give you more problems and more troubles. And it seems like that we all get into that stage where we're like Brother Paul. The older we get, the more trials come our way. Amen? It's true. Because why? You're fighting that good fight. You're keeping that faith. You're running that race. And the devil don't want you to win. Right. Isn't that right? Yeah. The devil don't want you to win. The older you get, the devil says, ah, they're getting tired. They're getting weary. They're getting weak. I'll get them here before long. Nah, uh, keep on fighting. Keep on running that race. Hold on to that faith. This is your joy. God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ will never leave you or forsake you. Hey, cheer for a new year. Cheer for a new year. 
about ready to close here in a little bit. This year, lecture Monto B. Why don't you give you a good Monto to live by? It's found in the book of Matthew. And God gave it to the disciples. He said, Seek first the kingdom of God yes. and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added to you. But what's he say? Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then all, can anybody say all? All. All these things, what God is saying, I'll hold no good thing from you. If you seek God and his righteousness, and whatever you have or whatever you desire, God said, I can give it to you. Amen. Yeah. Right. Problem is, we forget to seek God and His righteousness. Amen. I don't know about you, I like that. Shall we grow next Sunday? If you're here this Sunday, are you going to be here next Sunday? <laughs> Come on now. Yes. Come on now. Will you be here next Sunday? Why do I say that? Some would say no. Probably not. No, if it's the Lord's will. No, if it is God's will. Oh, if it's God's will, I'll be in church next Sunday. No, it is God's will for you to be in church. What did he say? Forsake not to assembling yourselves together as the manner of some is. Amen? We should be excited from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. We should be excited from Sunday to next Sunday. Isn't that right? But what's happened? Oh, Pastor, if it's God's will, I'll be there. I'm here to tell you it's His will. We should have that spring that never grows dry. From the beginning of the year to the end of the year. I don't know about you, I love to see spring. Like tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> spring makes everything grow. Isn't that right? Yes. Spring refreshes everything. I was looking today out in the woods, I was sitting up there, and, and I thought just here a couple months ago, I couldn't even see through the woods. Now all that snow is on, I can look for miles up through that woods. But when spring comes and the leaves come on, you can walk up there at the edge of the woods and you're lucky to see 20, 25 feet through the woods. Isn't that right? It's not dry then. No wonder Jesus said a lot of these things that people do would be done in the dry tree. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? And... Uh, up with your standard now and march on boldly. I couldn't find my Christian flag. I was going to bring my flag tonight. <laughs> Put up that banner. From what? From the beginning of the year to the end of the year, Lord, I'm going to wave the banner. I'm going to do something for your kingdom. Amen? I thought... There the other day, it was close, it was coming down to the last Sunday, which was today of the year. And uh, there's 52 weeks in a year. And I thought, man, that's a lot of broadcast, 52 weeks. That's a lot of preaching. That's a lot of singing for them girls to sing. I said, that's a lot. <coughs> and the devil sometimes comes by and <coughs> tells me, aren't you getting tired of doing that? Aren't you getting weary of doing that? Don't you get tired of going over there preaching and tired of running out there at the radio station? You have to do that every week. That's 
how the devil works. You don't want you doing nothing. I wrote down here the last thing. Won't you just take the name of the Lord, rise up your banner, and begin to sing and shout. Amen? Sing and shout for the glory of God. From the beginning of the year to the end of the year. What else have you got to do? I found a long time, a long time ago, if you don't sing and shout, like Teresa said a while ago, misery loves company. Doesn't it? <coughs> Negative thoughts loves company. And that right? <coughs> Amen. I told Wally I, I hear earlier, I said, you know, I, I, I was telling him Montaigne, I said, I can't get to the place being negative. I can't get to the place where I'm not doing nothing. Even when it's just bitter cold outside, I get my old Bible out and I get my typewriter and I get my pencil and paper and I'll type and I'll write. Because why? I want to keep my brain motivated. I want to keep my spirit motivated. I want to keep the motivation of God in my life from the beginning to the end of the year. People said, well, I get bored. I, I've been, what, going on, I said a while ago, 44 years serving the Lord, and I haven't got bored yet. Serving God. But some people act like they're bored. Well, if you're bored serving the Lord, I, need, I believe you need to find something to do. Amen? Mm -hmm. Need to find something to do. But in closing, the eyes of the Lord thy God are always up on it from the beginning of the year even unto the end of the year. I don't know about you, that's good news to me. That is good news. Amen? Like what? The Bible says cool water. What is it? From cool water from a far, far land? And... <coughs> mm -hmm. Good news from a far country. Amen. It's like quenches my thirst. Uh -huh. Amen. Quenches my thirst. I was thinking tonight, old Katie come up here. I thought, man, that's a big bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, man, I couldn't drink all of that water. That's a big bottle of water there. But that's what good news is. Amen? Keep on drinking and keep on drinking, and you never get thirsty. Amen? I, I, as I was saying earlier, I can get over on that typewriter, and I can take a pencil and paper, and I can write. I write a lot of my messages by pencil and paper, some of them I type, but... I'll sit over at that table uh, for hours during the dining room and I'll be doing that and never even think about drinking anything. Never even enters my mind. And if I, if I do carry a cup of coffee or a cup of tea over to drink, I'll get so busy doing that that it gets cold. I'll say, hey honey, how about coming warming up my coffee or my tea? I don't want to leave what I'm doing. Because why? I enjoy what I do. Seems like I can't pull myself away from it. You can ask her, sometimes I'll get so tired and stuff from doing it, I'll come in there and I'll sit down on the couch with her a little bit to watch TV and I'm over I'm tired. I'm wore out. Because why? I enjoy that. Amen. And I just want to give you a little bit of uh, food for thought. I ran across something in this Bible. That's why I love searching the scriptures. That amen. I found out at one time, and I'm going to be bringing a Bible study on it. 
that there was a dispensation for angels. <coughs> and the amazing thing was about it, I thought angels could never be repentive. Boy, did God prove me wrong. I'm sure is. I found out that God had a way for angels to repent back when all the other angels followed Satan before man was created. I found that in the Word of God. Can you believe that? And I probably read it thousands of times and never grabbed a hold of it. I'm going to prove it to you. Amen. Praise God. If you ever run across the scripture, and I'm not going to tell you where it is, I'll give you a little bit of food for thought to think about it. Elect angels. I'm not going to tell you where it's at. If you want to search the scriptures, you'll have to find it. Elect angels. Only elect humanity <coughs> can get saved because they're elected by God. God elected or selected His angels to see whether they passed the test like humans. Why? We're all free moral agents. It's going to blow your mind. It blew mine. Because I always thought, well, you know, angels haven't got no way for redemption. Well, I'm going to prove to you they do. Not now, but they did back in the beginning of time. Before man was created. Amen. Hey, why? God's such a good God. He has mercy for everybody. Amen. Thank God He had mercy on you and I. Why couldn't He have mercy on His angels? He's created. They're created. Amen. I know some of you is looking at me kind of weird. Amen. But that's why I love searching the Scriptures. Because why? I always find some good golden nuggets in there that I didn't know of before. Amen. 